All right. Um, I would like to share another one of Jan Brett's books with you. Um, this is called Who's That Knocking on Christmas Eve? And maybe you listen to this on Christmas Eve. So here's another holiday story for you. Here we go. This was given to me by one of my students way back when. His name was Benjamin. All right, who's that knocking on Christmas Eve? High above the Arctic Circle in the land of ice and snow, the northern lights shimmer in the night like a curtain of color hanging from the sky. Ooh, beautiful words. So high in the Arctic Circle. The air is so crisp and clear in the northern place that no, that one Christmas Eve long ago, a boy from, let me get this going a little bit better here, from Finnmark on his way to Oslo with his ice bear could see smoke curling up from a hut far in the distance. See that? He was cold and hungry, so he headed towards it. Far off in another direction, someone else smelled the smoke, and even though he couldn't see it, he raced off to tell the others. Oh, look at that little troll. As the boy from Finnmark made his way toward the hut, Kyrie was inside feeling, feeding the fire that made the smoke that roasted and baked the fine food. So, there's the little girl in the hut. Delicious sausage and fish and tasty buns and cakes were all laid out on a pine table. Sweet porridge bubbled over the fire and apple cider stayed cooled in the windowsill. So why did Kiri jump at every creek in the sod roof? And why did she run to the window when an icicle fell into the snow? So she was a little bit on edge. It was because in years past on Christmas Eve, trolls came when they smelled the delicious aromas coming from the hut. They would pound on the door until it burst open and they wouldn't leave until they had eaten up every bit of the Christmas Eve meal, those little trolls. No troll invasion this year, Kyrie's father had said. I'm going up to the mountain to watch and chase them away. And off he had gone to stop the trouble before it began. This, so this year, Kyrie was alone in the hut when she heard a soft sound at the door. Knockety knock, knockety knock. Someone was out there, but surely it was too polite a knock for for it to be a troll. Kyrie went to the door and peeked out. There was the boy from Finnmark with his ice bear. Please let me inside to warm up, he said. I am on my way to south to show off my bear for the townsfolk of Oslo. I have many frosty miles behind me and many more to go. Come in, Kyrie said, but I have to warn you that in years past, our house has been invaded by a pack of hungry trolls. Trolls would be a welcome adventure, the boy said. So he came in and the ice bear crawled under the warm stove and fell asleep. All right. Kyrie and the boy had just settled down in front of the fire when they heard, not so softly this time, knockity knock, knockity knock. There's no one home, the boy called. He was certain it was the troll, so he pushed the big chest in front of the door. When all was quiet, Kyrie and the boy sat down in front of the fire again. Kyrie got to thinking, I wonder if the porridge is creamy enough, and she ladled a bit of it into bowls for each of them. They had just raised their bowls when they heard a loud knockity knock, knockity knock. It was as if someone was pounding the door with a big rock. No one is home, the boy from Finnmark shouted, and he ran to lock all the windows. There's her dad. I don't know if you can see that. Remember I shared that in Jan Brett's book, she kind of gives a window in what, to what's going to happen or what is currently happening. Okay. It was quiet again, but the delicious smells wafted through the hut. Kyrie got to thinking, hmm, is the sausage salty enough? She took a piece for herself and gave one to the boy. They had just raised their, raised their forks when they heard a thunderous knockety knock, knockety knock. The hut shook and they heard a loud crack. It was the cellar trap door splintering open. Kyrie and the boy ran into the animal shed and pulled the door shut just as a torrent of noisy trolls burst up from the cellar. Oh. 
There were bat ear trolls, there were bug nose trolls, and each troll was wilder and more ruckus than the one before. They munched and grunted, shrieked and cackled, splashed the cider and crammed themselves with Christmas cakes. How rude. Then when they were through stuffing themselves, they tumbled about pinching each other, stamping on one another's toes and tweaking their little snouts, which is how trolls have a good time. So they're just causing a ruckus. There's the two, Kyrie and um, the boy from Finmark. But through the ruckus and din, the littlest troll spied the ice bear under the stove. Ooh, curiosity. He took the hot morsel of sausage he had been roasting in the fire and screeched, Have a bit of sausage, kitty. And he poked the sleeping bear's nose with it. Kitty? The ice bear leaped up with a tremendous roar, his nose burning ter terribly. Growling, he chased the little troll and all the big trolls around the table, up the walls and out the windows. Scratch them, kitty! <laughs> Kyrie and the boy cheered as they watched the trolls scramble off through the ice and snow, howling. Up on the hill, Kyrie's father heard the shout, so he raced down on his skis. When he saw the trolls, Kyrie's father could tell in an instant that they wanted to be as far away from the little hut as they could be. Goodbye, trolls, he shouted as they disappeared up the mountain and he skied home. What a fine bear you have, he told the boy from Finmark. Thank you for scaring away those pesky trolls. You must come back next year for a real Christmas Eve feast on your way home from Oslo. And they all sat down for some porridge. Those little trolls, I don't think they're gonna be coming back. A year later, Kyrie was on the mountain gathering wood to make the fire to cook their dinner on Christmas Eve. When the littlest troll popped up from, from behind a snowbank. Missy, he called in a high crackly voice. Do you still have that kitty who sleeps under the stove? Oh yes, Kyrie said, only she has grown up into a big cat now and now she has seven kittens even larger and fiercer than herself. Ah! he screeched, then he won't be visiting your hut on Christmas Eve. And he disappeared into a huge snowdrift and off went the trolls. And that is, who's that knocking on Christmas Eve? All right, Merry Christmas, boys and girls.